Scoop foot. So when we're drop kicking the ball, the one thing we want to avoid is trying to scoop the ball to get our height with the drop kick. Make sure that we keep our foot strong, let that, let that ball bounce, keep our foot and leg nice and straight so that we can actually get under the ball with a powerful foot, powerful strong body. If we try to scoop the ball, that's when we lose all our momentum, all our power and get an ugly weak foot. Stay strong, get up through the ball. So the common thing you always hear from your coaches is keep your head down when you're kicking. Now that is true, but for me the better cue is keep your nose over your toes. So your toe is your plant foot foot, so for me it's my left foot, I'm kicking with my right. As long as my nose stays over my plant foot toes, I'm in a positive position. Every time I kick, I'm staying positive and over those, the nose over the toes. As soon as my nose breaks back and I'm leaning back, you can see there it's a really easy cue. Now my nose is no longer over my toes. So that's all it is. We don't have to be here keeping our head down. Just keep your nose over your toes. Okay, the high ball catch in rugby is actually really similar to a basketball layup. So the same way that we want to try and create a small angle to attack the ball, it's much easier in a high ball situation to attack it from an angle than be directly under it. So the same thing as the basketball layup, give yourself a little bit of an angle and you'll be able to attack the ball a lot more and be in a better position to catch the ball. Right, time for some spiral bomb action. Now, you need to see your ball up on a slight angle. I like to have the nose down just a touch. And when I'm gonna try to chuck up the spiral bomb, it's really important that I keep my kick the same. So I don't wanna try and actually make the ball spiral, pull away and try to get that spiral effect. If I just keep my foot nice and strong, planted, flexed, that ball's gonna do the work and we get a nice result. Let's see what it looks like. It's massive. Hot tip when you've got your RB Vortex T, if you fold it over for when you're traveling, sit it like that. When you put it in your bag, it's going to stay nice and in shape. That way, when you pop it back out, she's going to be beautiful and back to its original state. Quite often, these T's get thrown around, scrunched up in bags. So, quick tip flip it over, leave it in your bag like that. When you come back to it, she'll be perfect. Guys, so whenever you're kicking for touch or kicking for a target in the distance, always try to offset yourself about 30 degrees. So if this line here is my line of target where I want to kick the ball through the post, so it doesn't matter whether I'm aiming for touch, downfield or whatever the target is, I want to offset myself 30 degrees. So for me that looks like this. So if I'm kicking from this blue cone, offset myself 30 degrees from there. And from here I'm just going to come in and make the kick through the target. the ball ends up straight. So when you're kicking for touch, doesn't matter where your target is, offset your chest 30 degrees from there and then execute the kick. How do I get more power and distance in my kick is a pretty common question that comes up. Quite often we see a lot of kicking drills that are really small, really frontal. We're just working on that knee flick. So all that's happening is we're just getting really good at just knee flicking from the knee joint. What we need to use is this big butt that we've got. So we've actually got to get that extended, get this glute firing and use all that big back lift to then put some pressure through that ball. So in this drill, set your ball up on your kicking tee. All you're going to do is to set up your plant foot, get your rodeo arm up nice and tall as well. We're going to practice getting that extension. Now it's actually quite a hard position to hold. The shoulders on and this big strong glutes firing, ready to kick. So we're actually going to extend, get more distance in our kicks purely just by using this booty, getting big, getting powerful through that ball. Hey guys, just make sure when you go kicking that your balls are pumped up. Reason being is if your balls are too flat, your foot's going to actually stay on this ball for way too long. It means you're going to hook all your kicks. So pump up your balls, have them at a really good pressure, and you'll have a much better kicking session. Okay, so we've got three balls set up on three of the RB Vortex mid-cuts. This one here is really flat. Now I tend to find that when you have too flat a ball, you get a big punch up the back of the ball, the ball compresses and we get that really ugly wobbly kick um, that's hard to control, can go either way if you get it wrong. Now when the ball's too uh, upright, we tend to get a lot of backspin on the ball, that really fast backspin that takes the ball up and we lose a bit of distance and clean strike. For me, I like to have the ball sitting on about the 45 degree, which is over here on this yellow tee. It means that I still promote that backspin, but I get so much more punch behind the ball, slower backspin and then can fly the ball how I want to fly the ball. 
So when we're doing our ball drop, our foot's actually outside our center line. So if this is my center line, I actually want to push the ball out to my right foot where I'm kicking, out here at my right hip. So when we're doing our ball drop, I actually want to give a bit of momentum to it, place it out there and let that ball drop straight. So every time you do it, ball's in your midline, push it out to that right hip, you're always going to get that beautiful ball drop because now your ball's got a bit of momentum behind it. Last one, straight ball from your midline, push it out. It's dropping beautifully and perfectly straight for that big strong right foot. I hope you guys know which way you have your ball valve sitting when you set your ball up on your tee. So for me I always had that valve facing down just to give the ball some balance. If we have this valve on the side you'll actually notice that the ball wobbles in the air when you kick it. So it doesn't matter whether it's on the bottom or the top of the ball but you've got to make sure that every time you set that ball up on the tee you always have the exact same spot to build consistency in your kicking game. So just like a floppy handshake is really weird, having a floppy foot is just as bad. So when we're kicking the ball, we need to get our foot in a really hard, strong position. It's called plantar flexed. So with my foot, instead of having a really floppy foot down here, I actually want to lock it up, get nice and strong with that foot, expose that big hard bone called the foot knuckle, and really get up the back of the ball. So we don't want any floppy foot. So I've got a big headwind coming at me and I'm kicking into a strong breeze. Now with my ball, I kind of can see kickers really flatten it out. Now as we know, if we flatten out our ball too much, we get a big punch up the back of the ball, ugly ball fight and it doesn't work. What you can do is you can just drop it a touch, but what I want you to think about is your momentum and actually punching through with your full body after the ball. So when we go into our kicking motion, when I'm actually gonna get through this kick, it's more important for me now to take my whole pillar from my knees through to my chest, through the ball and get everything punching through the ball. That way your ball's gonna stay low, it's gonna stay nice and low into that wind and get the result we want. So what's the best way to set yourself up at the back of your mark? So once you've got your ball set up on your tee, once you're actually back here in this kicking position, I've seen a lot of people on a lot of different variations, so the one foot forward, sideways, the hands up. For me, when I'm learning to kick and trying to keep things simple, I like to have my feet at the back of the ball, my hips at the back of the ball, and my chest at the back of the ball. So all of my being, all of my momentum is always going towards the back of the ball. So that when I approach, it's the same, it's simple and consistent every time that I'm making my approach. From there, once you've got confidence, then happy for you to play around with your feet, the step back, body angles, all those other things. 